All right, time to lay out a PC board. This is the this is the uh, schematic that uh, I found online. I'm going to add to it a little bit, but you can see that it's uh, got two optocouplers um, to take care of the nonlinearity. It's using an LM358, which seems fine to me. So it's single single ended. So uh, let's uh, let's go look at a schematic that I put together. All right, here we go. Uh, so the power comes in and the signal comes in on the left. Uh, the power supply gets filtered with a couple of capacitors. Um, I then make a um, virtual ground with a couple of resistors and a capacitor. It's not an active ground, but it's enough for what I need it here for. Then that virtual ground can be used to um, change the input uh, bias of the op amp since it's a single single voltage single rail op amp we're operating from say 0 to 12 volts we we come in at around 6 volts and we can AC couple it if we want if we want to DC couple it we can just load a 0 ohm resistor where C1 is so you can change this thing if you want it to it then comes into the two opto couplers and uh, I've put in the two resistors here to modify the uh, modify the operating point as in their schematic. I haven't tried this yet, but I thought it was a good idea, so put it in. Uh, then the output, I've gone ahead and buffered it with another op amp on the other side and uh, AC coupled that if you want to. So there you go. Let's take a look at what, what the PC board might look like. All right, uh, so here we go. Um, we have a um, section on the left and a section on the right. Let me put in the ground planes. It'll make more sense. So we have a low voltage on the left-hand side and the high voltage on the right-hand side. And uh, the only thing connecting the two is the optocoupler. Um, and I've gone ahead and put in a, um, let me show you what it looks like when it's all done. Uh, so here we go. So there is a uh, cutout in the ground. I mean, in the PC board, you can see there's a hole or slot in the PC board that does a high voltage separation between the two sides. And uh, yeah, that's what it's going to look like. There'll be an input and an output. And inside dog will take care of everything. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. I like these 3D. I like these 3D viewers. All right, let's turn on the silk screen on this one. So there you go. Um, I've gone ahead and uh, uh, copper poured the backside as well. So there'll be a pour on the front and a pour on the bottom. And, oh, that doesn't look good. Good thing I've been looking at this. I've been looking at the other side. So, uh, yeah, let's fix this up. Let's fix this up. Um yeah, track violates, track violates. Yeah, let's uh, let's get rid of these, and yeah, we will reroute. We will reroute that. Oops, there we go. I like that. And then this one here is just silliness. Oops. So we will get rid of that one and put in something new. Uh, oh, I don't like that. I guess that's okay. I could, that, yeah, that's fine there. Let me re-pour this, what it looks like. Yeah, and we need some more over here. I shifted these left, that's what that's what happened here. Yeah, this one's all messed up too. I shifted them left, but I didn't, uh, Look at the bottom side. That one was here, and then there's one that goes from here up. There we go. And is everything else looking good? Uh, that one looks like it violates right there. So let's move him over. There we go. That looks that looks good. 
and do a check here. In uh, KiCad, you can run a design rule check and see if everything's looking good. We've got six errors. Got a footprint overlay. Okay, so we've got this footprint overlay. We've got uh, the capacitor uh, right here. Oops, let's turn on. We've got this uh, capacitor here. It needs to come down. All right, and we'll bring that down. Uh, let me just reroute these. I don't like the way they look. Get rid of that one. So if you highlight on one of them, then you hit the U button, it highlights the whole thing, and you can delete it. And then we can, we can kind of follow the shadow here. There we go. Oops. Yeah, that's looking better. And... There, that looks good. Copper pour. Hit the B button and it fills in the uh, fills in the copper. Oops. All right, let's take a look at the next error. Next error. Click on that. Footprint overlap. RV two and RV one. I don't care about. The those symbols, simulation, simulation, don't care about this. Thermal relief incomplete. That's only one count on a thermal relief. And that's usually okay. Copper bottom. C5, where is C5? Oh, I see. So this is a good explanation. So you can see here that we have a ground going to this uh, capacitor. This is a capacitor. And instead of having four ground connections to it, there's only one from the bottom here. And if we wanted to do it a little bit better, we could, we could take this and we could slide him over. Footprint here, let's move him over. And if we re-pour this, you can see that now this guy is getting two connections, okay? Two ground connections, so that's better. That is better. Let's do another design rule check. See how we're doing. Mm, okay, there's a, uh, we looked at those already. These are simulation things, that's junk. Ignore test, okay, there's a bunch of warnings. Uh, edge cuts on the silk screen. Yeah, I know about those. Warning, warning, footprints does not match the cop. That's fine. Everything's fine. Close. All right. So it's going to complain about this uh, footprint going across my cut here. But that the uh, a silk screen, but that's okay. Don't care about that. So I think this is ready to go out the door. Yeah. So um, let me give you a, a tip here. When I get ready to do the finalization, I will turn off, turn off the copper layers and just take a look at the silk screen. And that's looking pretty good. Oops, nope, nope, nope. See right here? This is why I do it. We couldn't, uh, couldn't see that one silk screen there. So are these all looking good? This is all looking good. All right, so the silk screen looks good. So now I'll turn off the silk screen. In fact, I'll turn off a whole bunch of things here. And paste adhesive, turn this all off. We've got edge cuts, we'll do the, get rid of the fabs. 
And what else do we got here? Margins. User edge cuts. Okay, so we're looking good here. All right, so now what I'll do is I'll turn on just the top copper and see if everything is looking reasonable. And everything looks pretty good here. All right, and then I will turn on just the bottom copper and see if everything's looking good here. This comes straight down, it comes around. Yeah, that looks okay to me. All right, now you can turn them both together, take a look at it, see if everything is working. Oh, the V is working. The V is seem to be in good places. Not many vias on this board. Um, yeah, and then there we go. So we have um, put the silk screen back on, and that's basically your completed board. Um, yeah. And then, like I said, I love the three D viewer. Take a look at that one more time. Yep. Looks all right. Looks good. All right, let's send it out. All right. Um, you create all your Gerberas and put them in a zip file. So now you have all your Gerber layers and all your all your uh, drill drawings and everything's in a zip file, right? You're ready to go. So what I like to do is I like to go into the uh, InstaQuote part of uh, PCB Way Out. It's here. PCB way insta quote, go into insta quote, and then on uh, you can say quick order PC board right there, and then I always go to the online Gerber viewer. So you go to the online Gerber viewer, hit plus, click on the file you've just created, and there you go. So you can check to make sure their Gerber is interpreting your um, file correctly. And this one looks like it is. I can look at the bottom layer. I can look at the top layer. And I can look at a whole bunch of layers, right? And make sure that they're all looking good. So this looks fine to me. Do one last check here. All right, so we're good to go. So that was the um, Gerber viewer. You can go to Instacote. You can say Quick Order PC Board. You can say add Gerber file. We'll click on that same file. And then it'll automatically figure out uh, what this board will cost you. So this is a small board, so I can get five boards for $5. Always check to see if you can get more boards, though. So go here to Pieces and click on 10 pieces and look at it. It's still $5. Uh, so you can get 10 pieces for the same price as five pieces. So why wouldn't you? Click on 15 pieces, and oh, now it's gone up to $19. So 10 pieces is the way to go. All right. So we will go back to, uh, oops, size, to 10 pieces. All right. Then you can say, um, take all the defaults except for things you care about. So things I do care about are the thickness of the PC material. So here's the thickness. So we can make it thin or we can make it thick or we can just leave it with a default. So 1.6 millimeters is default. So we'll just leave it there. Um, the minimum drill, just leave those all alone. Now you can figure out how, what color board do you want? Do you want a red one? Do you want a yellow one? Do you want a blue one? Black one? Uh, those are the standard colors. If you hit purple, you can see the price goes up quite a bit. Matte black and yellow. Um, these are custom custom colors. Um, all right, so we're going to get a, oops, solder mask here. Solder mask, I have matte green. There we go, red. And silk screen. I'm sorry. So silk screen. I had. I want a white silk screen. All right. And we're gonna make this a red board, a green board. Yeah, green board's fine. I like green boards. I'll do a green board, and then you can say, do you want a hot air level? Do you want it gold? 
Those are all cost money. These things all cost money, so you don't do any of that. And then once you're in um, here, you can you can say, oh, geez, they're going to ch charge me $20 for shipping. But if you click this thing here, you can look down. You can say, oh, well, if I go to U.S. Post Office, it's only cost me $9 shipping. So, And if I do this global shipping, it's only cost me $5.50 shipping. So why don't I do that? Well, it's a number of days. So um, this one's going to take eight to 13 business days. And it and I've used that and it works and it takes a while to get here. Um, if we click on the DHL here, it's only $20, but it, you get it in two to four days. So uh, yeah, that's, that's why it's charging as much. It defaults to the best shipping method here, but you can go slower and cheaper, no problem at all. And then uh, save it to your cart. And, uh, and then it'll just sit there and uh, you need to wait for them to approve it. Okay, so some boards it will automatically approve if it passed all of their robot tests. They don't, no, no human has to look at it. Otherwise, a human has to look at it and they'll take a couple hours, especially if China's asleep. Uh, it'll take a few hours for them to get back with you and then you can go to the, uh, go to the checkout here. 